In our last video, we spoke about the sine and cosine functions in GLSL and how we can use them to animate. For this part of the course, we're going to use them to animate our shimmer effect. And for this next part, I'm going to show you how to create a box in GLSL. And this will be useful because this will be the main shape that will move backwards and forwards to create our shimmer. So let's go ahead and create a new file in VS Code. As you can see, I do have my old solid color shader open as I'm going to use this as a template for the box file. So let's go ahead and grab all this code, paste it in here and get rid of this. So this is our boilerplate code for our typical GLSL frag shader. Let's save this file and call it rect.frag to say rectangle. And let's go ahead and create our uniform variable and get our U resolution. Okay, we are gonna be using this as normal to normalize our pixels. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll create a new variable, which is a vec2, and we'll call it pixel coordinates. We'll get our GL frag chord, just the X and Y from our vec4, and we're gonna divide it by the U resolution. Perfect, so we've got our normalized pixel coordinates here. And everything we're going to do in this file is stuff that you already know. So all the methods I'm gonna use, you already know how to use, so I can explain as I write the code. Let's create another variable. We'll have a float variable and we'll call it border width. And this will kind of be the width of our box, but I'll explain a bit later on. We'll have it 0 0.3. And the way this is gonna work is we're gonna have two step functions and I'll create one first and then create the other and explain what they're both doing. So we'll have a vec2 and we'll call that bottom left. And that will take a step function. So this is the first time I'm using a, a vec2 step. The first step we used to create a circle was one that's returned a float. So this will have different properties from a float. Let's then get a vec2 of our border width. So that will be 0 0.3 twice and we'll get our pixel chords. So if you can remember from our last video, what this is essentially doing is going through each of our coordinates and checking that they are less than this, which will be 0 0.3, and then it will do black if they're less, so that'll be zero, and white if they're not, so if they're more, that will be one. So one's white, zero is black. And what we're gonna do now is just apply that to our frag color so we can see what is going on. And before I do that, a frag color needs to contain a vec4. So let's do that. And we need to convert this vec2 into a float. Um, in order to do, to do that, we can times the two values in the vec2. So for example, if you wanted to convert this vec2 to a float, we just times border width by border width. So to do that, I'm gonna have a float. Well, I'm gonna call it vec2 float, or maybe vec2 to float, vec2 to float, something like that anyway. Um, make it more readable. And what I'm gonna do is get bottom left and times it by bottom left, Y. Now, of course, we could have um, R, G, B as well. So we could have R and G, but in our case, X and Y makes more sense. So now I've made this vec to a float. I can then do vec three here and have an opacity of 1.0. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, as you can see, we have this sort of an L shape. So this will say anything that is above 0 0.3, 0 0.3 is white, anything that's below is black. So we do, we do kind of have a box here, but we want a box in the middle. And in order to do that, we can create another vec2, but instead we're gonna minus it by one. And as you can see, it will put it in the opposite place. So if we get two of them to overlap each other, we'll have a box perfectly in the middle of our canvas. Let's do that now. Instead of having a bottom left shape, we're gonna have a top right. And we're gonna times everything together. So let's have this in brackets. We're gonna do times other bracket and we'll say top right y, sorry, x times top right y. So with that done, I forgot to do that. You'll see we have a box inside our canvas. So to recap, we normalized our pixels using the U resolution uniform 
we created a border width and we created two steps of VEC2, one for the bottom left and one for the top right. We put them together by making them float. So we made the VEC2s to float by timesing everything together and made it a color here. Now, before we leave, let me just show you what, what it looks like if we just had a float here. Let's duplicate this line. Actually, I don't need this line. Let's get rid of this. Instead of having a VEC2, we'll just have a float. And this will be one like so. And this needs to be a float as well. So let's times them both together. Bits record dot y. And then let's make this there. And as you can see, this is how we end up creating our circle shape. Because if it's a VEC2, you kind of get an L. If it's just a float, you get a round circle -ish shape. So let's put everything back to how it was to have our box back. And that's our box. So in our next video, I'm going to show you how to rotate this box in GLSL, which we're going to use to rotate and then move our shimmer. It will all make sense at the end, but stick with me for now. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you can't wait till next week to see the next part of this course, then check out the Udemy course. The link for that is in the description.